Next up, Daniel Hare, CEO and founder, Zeotap Deutschland. Sure. So what can you see here? You can see something we must not forget about. Google and Facebook today earn 65% of the entire ad spend that flows into mobile. That means the remaining 35% have to be distributed and shared among every single publisher, all the Time Warners, the Candy Crush sagas, every single SSP, ad network, ad exchange, DSP, you name it. Google and Facebook have two things that made them so powerful what they have built their empire on, data at massive scale. Outside of these wallet gardens, we don't have that. So we have to come up with sophisticated algorithms, machine learning. Some people even make me believe they have invented their own time machine. You get the story. Now, from the user perspective, as we just learned, users are spending more and more time on mobile. Actually, 74% of their time is outside of Google and Facebook. It's on the other platforms. But on these platforms, advertising does not work today. It's mostly annoying, irrelevant. I give you an example. My director of marketing, Oliver, who is sitting with you here in the audience, was recently almost hired away by Amazon. As you can imagine, he was extremely compelled to work as a warehouse man. Unfortunately, he didn't pass the Polish language test. So this is just an example for an ad which does not work, right? There's many, many examples like this. We believe it's the most frustrating and the biggest nightmare for any agency or brand to be irrelevant or even irritating. So that is why actually all the big guys, all the cool brands today have to consolidate their brand spendings into the wallet gardens. That is why they are so dependent. The big question is, how can we solve that problem? Where can we get great data at scale from in the combination to create better alternatives for brands? Four years ago, this story and my personal story collided. I was working at Vodafone, and the executive board asked me to come up with an optimal location footprint for all Vodafone retail stores. And that request came with a gift, telco data. I was so amazed by the impact of that data on the overall project that I thought, what if we could make that data available to external industries? So remember, telcos have demographic data, they have location data, and they have browsing data at massive scale. There is no reason at all to hide behind Google and Facebook. If you think of aggregating two to three carriers per market, you easily reach 80 to 100% of the entire smartphone population. That is a real treasure. Now, when we started building ZeroTap two years ago, people were telling me, Daniel, this is insane. The treasure is under elephant's butts. You will be riding against windmills like the Spanish Don Quixote you will never ever solve the privacy equation. As of today, we're the first and only company in our sector that got e-privacy certified against strict European law. We certified our technology against domestic telecom data regulation in all countries we're active in. We've raised eight million from investors around the globe. One of them is actually the guy that built the Amazon recommendation engine. We've integrated within 12 months with six carriers in India, Italy and Spain, they're onboarded, we have their data. Now, would, do you believe Mercedes would like to advertise their new E-Class on mobile if they don't know your age or your income group? We're helping them to make sure exactly this doesn't happen, to reach exactly their target audience. We're helping the big Spanish bank, La Caixa, 
which exactly millennials in distinct locations they have briefed us on to win the right target group. And we're helping UNICEF to validate their audience on mobile, which actually donates from mobile. At the end of this year, we'll have more deterministic profiles in India than Facebook from a cross-carrier model. And I'm very happy to announce that by Q3, we'll be live with a major telecom, major tier one telecom in the United States as well. So how does this work? We integrate our technology with telcos. We anonymize and activate their data to make it accessible to agencies and brands, directly and indirectly through their existing preferred partners to keep it simple. I want you to keep in mind two distinct things. We can help all of you validate your existing audience on mobile, and we can subsequently target exactly this deterministic audience on mobile at scale with verified ZeoTap telco data. Now, as the motto of this conference is, make data human, our offer to you is, you don't need to make data human if you can get hold of human data at scale. Very nice. <laughs> I'm going to come to you for some copy uh, writing. So, um, members of the jury. Um, have you measured your data, um, the telco data, against um, uh, Comscore and Nielsen to see if you match? Sorry, what was the question? Um, you know, Comscore and Nielsen yeah, are yeah. measuring audiences, like age and gender, yeah. you know. Is the telco data matching the quality of Nielsen and Comscore, or do you see a big gap between them? Yeah. So, as far as I know, um, Comscore's data is based on panels. And we have a huge interest in working with these companies and helping them to actually increase their capability of measuring ad performance. So we don't see ourselves as competitors. We rather would like to work with them and help them to basically have deterministic true data against their panels. Any other questions? So uh, Verizon bought AOL. Yep. I mean, what, so they are doing their own thing. Yep. How are you going to react to that? I mean, that's if, if all telcos do that, they're big enough to do it themselves. Sure. Why would it work with you? Sure. So basically, you do, you're asking the make or buy question, right? So at the end of the day, um, two things. So first, DNA. Usually, telcos can't or are not successful if they do something outside of their core business. It's just a DNA topic. Secondly, if you have aggregated the first telco, you bring the second and the third. The advertiser pays higher CPMs because the efficiency of the of the scale goes up, right? So it's better, in other words, for the telco to join an existing company. Looking at Verizon, they can't enrich Wi-Fi. They can only do mobile web. Doesn't make sense. OK. That's uh, what we have for the questions. So I'd now like to bring down to the stage Olivia Colo, Digital Marketing Manager, Sky UK. Hi, great presentation and great use of time, <laughs> very, very well done. Um, I think this is an amazing proposition, absolutely amazing. I think it kind of opens up the doors to what is considered premium inventory, it kind of opens that door on mobile for advertisers. Um, in terms of location targeting, we could definitely use that to um, understand exactly where, where a person has been and then potentially target them when they get back home, when we know that they're more likely to buy Sky. That's the perfect example how we could use your technology. I think this could allow us to create more customer-centric creative. I think, um, if you're linking to telco data, we then have access to exactly what the, the mobile is the most personal device, exactly what they're browsing, exactly what they like, exactly when they're online, exactly what they do. That the, the opportunity is literally endless. Um, Potentially, could you um, then understand who a group of friends are, who are, who are unit is, who a community is, and then market to them um, consequentially as well. Um, also, the global targeting opportunity as well. If you if you are um, if you have telcos in di in different countries, if I'm potentially abroad, is there an opportunity there? Um, and then also, this I feel just adds a really really useful um, extra data data point to our DMP. The retargeting possibilities are phenomenal. So retargeting somebody, 
you know exactly it's that person on mobile rather than just assuming it's that person because they're connected to the same Wi-Fi. I could be staying at a friend's house. It, does, it doesn't mean it's necessarily me. Um, this is absolutely amazing, and I would definitely like to talk to you a bit more about this after. Cool. Thanks. Well, that sounds great, no? <laughs> so um, thank you very much. Please have a seat. And I'd like thank to... You. Please nice go.